Today on Rappler. Kung ako sa kanya, mag-surrender na lang siya, harapin niya, harapin niya itong kaso at mga kaso, ng mga susunod na mga kaso. A nationwide manhunt is on for pork barrel queen Janet Napolis and her brother. She, she was at that time a struggling supplier. That's why I said, if she was rich then, why will she uh, go around, convince people uh, to uh, uh, give her money for that uh, contract? Former Marine Colonel Ariel Kerubin asks, from a struggling supplier, how did Janet Napolis become so wealthy? And a victim of the sex for flight scam faces her alleged abuser, Riyadh labor attache, Antonio Villafuerte. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rapper, your social news network. A manhunt is on for Janet Napoles, who has so far evaded authorities after a Makati court issued an order for her arrest. Natasha Gutierrez reports. Where in the world is Janet Lim Napolis? This is the question on everyone's mind over 24 hours since the Makati Regional Trial Court ordered her arrest and that of her brother, Reynald Lim. The two are wanted for illegal detention for the kidnapping of personal assistant turned whistleblower Ben Hurloy. They are also the alleged syndicates of a multi million pork barrel scam involving the pocketing of lawmakers' priority development and assistance funds. But after a full night and day of searching, the two are nowhere to be found. Justice Secretary Lila de Lima says someone tipped the two, which allowed them to evade arrest. Uh, and that's the reason why, because last night, as soon as the NBI team was able to get hold of copies of the warrant of arrest, they immediately proceeded to the known addresses of the Napoleses, including Inasa Pacific Plaza, Sadas Marinas, and meron pa, meron pa silang iba na mga pinuntahan, pero negative. Whistleblowers say the Napolises have at least 10 residential addresses in Metro Manila, Laguna, and Tagaytay. Regional and field offices are now involved in the nationwide manhunt. Twelve teams are deployed to continue the search, while the Bureau of Immigration is allowed to make arrests if it spots the two. Even citizen arrests are permitted. The Lima warns accomplices helping to hide the Nepalses will face charges as well. She recommends the two surrender or waive their right to air their side. Kung ako sa kanya, mag-surrender na lang siya, harapin niya, harapin niya itong kaso at mga kaso. Whether or not Nepalis cooperates, the Lima says the probe on the pork barrel scam continues. The Department of Justice also appeals to the public for leads and tips on the siblings' location, to help them find the Napolises faster. All eyes are on the NBI as they work to produce the alleged mastermind of what investigators call one of the biggest scams in the country's history. Now the Napolises join General Jovito Palparan and the Reyes brothers as among the country's most famous fugitives. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Manila. Here's another Rappler exclusive. SEC records show legitimate businesses owned by pork barrel queen Janet Napolis earned a little more than half a million pesos. Glaringly inconsistent with her family's lifestyle, their U.S. properties totaling 495 million pesos, at least 10 residential houses in the Philippines, and 30 cars. Napolis says her family's wealth came from legitimate sources, including inheritance from her parents and a profitable coal mining business. But Official filings show the net profits her registered business, businesses last reported total a little more than half a million pesos, 577,807.47 to be exact, from 2004 to 2012. Rappler checked with the Securities and Exchange Commission for businesses registered under Napolis family members. We found 24 companies formed over the last 16 years. Half of the companies have stopped operations. Of the 12 still operating, only three complied with the SEC requirement to file annual financial statements. These are 
RLG Solutions Corp., which deals with, quote, security systems and IT, JCLN Global Properties Development Corp., which is engaged in real estate, and JLN Corp., which deals with, quote, marine supplies and equipment. In its 2012 financial statement, RLG Solutions declared zero revenue and losses of more than 380,000 pesos. In 2012, JCLN Global Properties declared a gross income of 4.3 million pesos and a net income of more than 544,000 pesos. JLN Corp last filed a financial statement for 2011 where it declared a gross income of 4.03 million pesos and net income of 33,000 pesos. From 2004 to 2011, JLN Corpor Corporation, supposedly the flagship company of the Nepolises, declared annual net incomes of between 21,000 and 100,000 pesos. People who worked with Nepolis say she started as a vendor before becoming a military supplier. Sources say the changes in the, the Nepolis' lifestyle became evident around 2003. Nepolis attributes this to her coal mining business in Indonesia. But among the registered businesses in the Philippines, only two have something to do with mining and coal trading. Asia Star Power Resources Corporation, which is engaged in Coal ex Import Export was formed on April 8, 2011, but in 2012, it filed an affidavit of non-operation with the SEC. The other company, Sir Mine Corporation, was formed less than two months ago on June 20, 2013. The lawyer of Janet Napolis justifies her client evading arrest. She asks, wouldn't you hide too? Carmela Fonbuena reports. I'd like to clarify that we do not know where Mrs. Napoles is. If you were her, but hindi naman kayo magtatago. No? Kung ang napakagiting na Senator Lacson eh, nung inisyo ng warrant of arrest, eh, nagtago rin no? because he felt it was unfair. Attorney Lorna Kapunan was watching a Vilma Santos movie Wednesday evening when she received the barrage of calls. That's how she learned a Makati court issued an arrest warrant against her client, Janet Lim Napoles, a woman who has grown notorious for allegedly masterminding a multi-billion pork barrel scam. The arrest warrant is not for the pork barrel scam but for the alleged detention of employee and cousin turned whistleblower Ben Hurloy. This relates to a case of illegal detention. Uh, na ang Ben Hur, who used to be in her employ, uh, disappeared for I think three months to go on a retreat. This retreat was uh, self-imposed. Ben Hur himself said that uh, he would atone for his sins. Na bistu pusha na nagnanakaw sa company. Yung bonus ng mga empleyado three hundred thousand. This is not the version of the National Bureau of Investigation, which claims that Napoles abducted Louis because he was supposedly trying to set up his own scheme to earn kickbacks from the pork barrel. The NBI rescued Louis on March 22 from one of Napoles' condominiums in Taguig City. This begins his tell-all revelations about Napoles' supposed pork barrel scam. In July, the Philippine Daily Inquirer started its series on the story. The rest is history. The Department of Justice had dismissed this case of illegal detention, but it was reversed and the Makati court issued the arrest warrant. This is purely hearsay, purely hearsay, and please ask the secretary if it's true or not. I also want to know if it is true or not that she called a marathon meeting uh, saying that by all means you have to reverse this finding and file a case. By all means, dapat ma na yan. Kapunan says the arrest warrant came as a shock because no new evidence was presented to warrant the reversal of the earlier ruling. Napahiya nga ako kay Mrs. Napoles kasi I assured her. I really assured her that we must have faith in this uh, process. Kapunan reiterates her position that Mrs. Napoles is a fall guy. Even if you check the government records, she does not have a single contract with government. She has not received a single peso from government. There must be somebody who is orchestrating this. Yun dapat ang tunguhan ng investigation na ito. Who will benefit? Who are those people? Who are those entities that will benefit from a whitewash of this case? 
What happens now? Attorney Lorna Kapunan says they will avail of legal remedies to clear the name of Mrs. Napoles in the case of illegal detention and in the pork barrel scam. But will Mrs. Napoles herself show up to prove her innocence? Observers say a woman with huge resources at her disposal will be hard to find unless she decides to give herself up. Carmela Fonbuena, Rappler, Taguig City. Former Marine Colonel Ariel Kerubin speaks to Rappler about his family's past dealings with Janet Napolis and questions her claims her family built its wealth from coal trading. Kerubin says he knew Napolis as a struggling military supplier. In 1998, Napolis got a 3.8 million peso contract to deliver 500 Kevlar helmets to the Philippine Marines, but failed to deliver on time. Napolis also got Kerubin's wife and a doctor friend to invest in a supposed shipyard in Cebu. She, she was at that time a struggling supplier. That's why I said, if she was rich then, why will she uh, go around, convince people uh, to uh, uh, give her money for that uh, contract? Yes. Mrs. Loretta Kirubin died 19 years ago. A day before her death, she tried and failed to collect her investment from Napoles. Recalling the incident, Kirubin says Napoles went to the wake and apologized. He did not know then the stress his wife was under. The, the, it seems to hint, though, that that stress may have contributed to your wife's condition. Is this uh, correct? Yes. Uh, only then, w uh, only when I read the interview of uh, that doctor friend that I found out, the circumstances leading to her to that tragic death was really very stressful. From the time they were they were collecting uh, money in Binyan Laguna, where they st uh, used to live. And then they were uh, eat, uh, bite, beaten by mosquitoes. Uh, my baby was crying. Uh, wh when I was just reading it, I, I really I had goosebumps. I, I wanted to, uh, had I known earlier that, that uh, those happened, then I, wouldn't, uh, I would have uh, differently re reacted when, they, when I saw her. Kerubin says he wants to tell the public what he knows firsthand. How would you describe the character of Janet Napolis? I'll, I'll quote it from uh, the doctor friend of uh, my, my wife that uh, she has the thesis, uh, the, the capacity, the capability, and the character to do it. To do the pork barrel scam? Yes. Rappler's managing editor Glenda Gloria, who broke this story on the ties between the two families, says Kerubin's experience reinforces earlier reports about the source of the Napolis family's wealth. His story really reinforced a lot of things about Mrs. Napolis. Uh, for one, that um, the, the events that happened in 90, 1990s somewhat debunk her claim that she's been wealthy. From, from that time, yes. from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, to this day, she has not shown any proof mm -hmm. of that wealth. Three victims of the sex for flight scam in the Middle East faces their, face their alleged abuser, Riyadh Labor Attaché Antonio Villafuerte, during a Senate probe Thursday. In a dramatic gesture, one victim removes her mask to face her alleged abuser. The victim, Michelle, not her real name, asks Villafuerte, Now, Mr. Villafuerte, do you remember me, what you did to me? Responding to the questions of Senate Labor Committee Chair Jingoy Estrada, Villafuerte confirms he knew Michelle but denies he tried to rape her. In a privileged speech July 29, Estrada accused Villafuerte of sexually molesting Michelle and other distressed overseas Filipino workers. Estrada also narrates an event when Michelle, who had run away from an abusive employer with only the clothes on her back, requested items like underwear from Villafuerte. Villafuerte allegedly sent this text message to Michelle. He used Filipino words seldom used in everyday conversation. Senators considered the, quote, salungso and salungki, Filipino words for bra and panty, offensive. Michelle Villafuerte and other embassy and labor officials will return to the Senate on August 22 as the sex for flight probe continues. The Philippine 
Foreign Affairs Department urges Filipinos to leave Egypt as it raises crisis alert level 3 after civil unrest breaks out between supporters and opponents of ousted Islamist President Mohamed Morsi. Foreign Affairs spokesman Raul Hernandez says alert level 3 means voluntary repatriation of Filipinos in Egypt. Up to 6,000 Filipinos live there. On Wednesday, Egyptian security forces stormed the Cairo protest camps of Morsi's supporters in a long-anticipated assault. Officials say at least 525 people are killed. In response, the interim government imposes a month-long nationwide state of emergency and curfews in Cairo and 13 other provinces. The violence prompts Egyptian Vice President Mohamed El Baradai to resign, saying his conscience is troubled about the loss of life. He adds, it has become too difficult to continue bearing responsibility for decisions I do not agree with and whose consequences I fear. World leaders condemn the use of force by the interim government. The White House says it strongly condemns the violence against the protesters and opposes the imposition of a state of emergency. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, member countries of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, agree to push China to accept a binding code of conduct involving disputes in the South China Sea. Foreign ministers from the 10 member ASEAN nations say they will, quote, speak in one voice while seeking an early conclusion of a code of conduct. The ministers will meet Chinese officials in Beijing by the end of August. China claims nearly all of the sea and prefers bilateral talks instead of a legally binding code of conduct. At number seven, a tweaked version of Microsoft's Windows operating system will be available on October 18. Windows 8.1 restores the Start button missed by users and updates other features. It will be offered as a free download to those already using Windows 8. The update comes after a lukewarm reception to the operating system introduced last year for mobile devices and PCs. And at number 8. Researchers say people who use Facebook may feel more connected but less happy. A study of young adults released Wednesday says the more people used Facebook, the worse they subsequently felt. The study's lead author says that on the surface, Facebook fulfills the basic human need for social connection. The downside, though, is users seem to feel less happy. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers the most. These stories, these 10 stories, have had the most votes on the mood meter. If you take a look, um, you basically have a red day with one that's, that's don't care, this one, and then two stories that are green or happy. These two stories are near identical. Makati court orders the Napolis arrest 90% happy and arrest Napolis. Makati court says that's 93% happy. That actually coincides with the st main stories of the day, which have a lot to do with Janet Napolis. Story that's gotten the most number of votes on the mood meter. Janet Napolis and a tragic past was the exclusive story first broken by Glenda Gloria, our managing editor. 79% angry. You can see the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. Well, that is Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, August 15th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.